Thank you. Uh, it's one o'clock. I'm going to call the uh, February 11th, 2021 meeting of the Taxes Committee uh, to order under Rules 10.01 regarding remote meetings. Uh, again, to members of the public, if you would like to find any of the materials that we are going to be referring to today, the best place to get that is to go to the House Minnesota House of Representatives website, uh, then go to committees, and then to taxes. And on the right-hand side, you will find all of those uh, materials. So at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Griska to please call the roll. Mark Hort. Present. Mark Hort, present. Liz Lagarde. Present. Liz Lagarde, present. David. David's present. David's present. Abaje. Present. Abaje present. Carlson. Carlson present. Carlson present. Detmer. Detmer present. Detmer present. Garofalo. Present. Garofalo present. Gomez. Gomez present. Gomez present. Her. Her. Her toss. Her toss present. Her toss present. Howard. Howard present. Howard present. McDonald. McDonald. Present. McDonald present. Miller. Miller. Present. Miller present. Moran. Present. Moran present. Mortensen. Present. Mortensen present. Robbins. Present. Robbins present. Sundell. Present. Sundell present. Schultz. Present. Schultz present. Stevenson. Present. Stevenson present. Swazinski. Present. Swazinski present. Joachim. We have a quorum. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Griska. We do have a quorum. Uh, Representative Les Lagarde, would you like to move approval of the February 9th, 2021 minutes? So moved, Mr. Chair. Representative Les Lagarde moves approval of the February 9th, 2021 uh, minutes. Uh, any discussion or changes on that, members? Seeing none, I will ask all of you to unmute uh, yourselves as we take uh, a vote on this. All those in favor of approving those minutes, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Uh, the motion does prevail. The February 9th, uh, 2021 minutes uh, are approved. Uh, also want to say Representative Herr is now in attendance at the meeting. And also I'd like to direct members' attention to the February 10th, 2021 uh, referral uh, to the property tax uh, division. So members, we've got seven bills on the agenda today. And what I would like to do is move what is number 10 on the item uh, up to the next item. And that is gonna be Representative O'Neill's uh, bill for the Buffalo Fire Station. And you know, before we hear from Representative O'Neill, uh, Representative O'Neill, and I think Representative McDonald uh, also, uh, on behalf on behalf of the House of Representatives and all of the members of the Tax Committee, I just want to extend our thoughts and prayers to the Buffalo community for the tragic event this week, and also thank. You know, all the law enforcement, public safety, first responders, medical community uh, that came forward. So I just um, want to extend our thoughts and prayers and our 
feelings to everyone and condolences to all those involved, but uh, also thank those who responded in such a heroic fashion. So um, Representative O'Neill, thank you for being back. We miss not having you on taxes this year. And would someone, first of all, like to move uh, House File 650? So moved, okay. Mr. Chair. Yep. All right, Representative Les Lagarde moves House File 650 to be laid over for possible inclusion into the tax on this bill. Representative O'Neill, thank you for being here. Thank you, Chair Marquardt and members. It has been a very difficult couple days, and I am absolutely honored today to be joined by our Fire Chief Harnois and a dear friend for many years, couple decades, our council member, Steve Downer. And they wanna to talk to you a little bit about a sales tax refund that we can get for the Buffalo Fire Station. And they'll tell you kind of where the process is. Very simply, it needs to be a little bit retroactive back to March 31st, 2020. We brought this bill um, in February of 2020, just before all of us left because of the pandemic and because of all of that, we weren't able to get this in the 2020 tax bill. And so we're back again. And as interesting timing would have it, we are here just days after this terrible tragedy. And again, thank you so much for your thoughts and your prayers. Um, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to my testifiers. Representative O'Neill, thank you so much. Uh, Chief Arnos, if you would please introduce yourself and then uh, provide your testimony. Thank you, Representative O'Neill, for everything that you've been doing for us. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee men members. My name is John Arnois, and I am the fire chief for the city of Buffalo. Thank you for allowing me to testify on the city's request for the sales tax exemption for the construction of the new fire station in the city of Buffalo. The Buffalo Fire Department serves the city of Buffalo and the townships of Buffalo, Chatham, Maple Lake, Marysville, and Rockford. We serve an area of 72 square miles and approximately 22,000 people. We're currently working toward replace, replacing our downtown fire station. This fire station is nearing 60 years old and has outlived its ability to serve the department needs or the needs of our growing community. This current station has structural issues and does not have space to house the trucks and equipment that we need to provide adequate fire protection. The old fire station does not have the fire facilities needed for proper cancer mitigation. For example, it only has one small restroom, no showers, no facility for proper gear storage or cleaning and the truck base do not have the proper ventilation to remove dangerous diesel exhaust. The current station has zero meeting space or even space to sit down and take a break and have lunch. Uh, we currently use a tailgate of one of our grass drugs if we wanna have lunch after a big structure fire or a big fire and gather to go over the call and have a break and have lunch. We open the tailgate on our truck and that's where we have lunch. Uh, the new fire station will have space and facilities to solve all these issues and also, allow us to and also allow us to provide better service to our community. Uh, we'll have meeting space that will not only benefit the Buffalo Fire Department, but it'll also benefit all the departments in Wright County. Buffalo is in the center of the county and it's often, often a gathering point for all of our Wright County Fire Departments when we have joint meetings. The new, new fire station will also allow us to house our aerial truck, which will be located downtown where it is needed most. This is a $7 million project, which includes approximately $240,000 in sales tax. The city is here to, today to request a sales tax exemption so these funds can go back into the building project and lessen the burden on the city of Buffalo and the surrounding townships. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Arnois. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Downer, please identify yourself and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Steve Downer. I'm on the Buffalo City Council. I'd like to thank you for hearing this bill again for your gracious and kind remarks and also for 
Representative O'Neill for carrying this forward. I'll just amplify a couple points the chief made. Quickly, uh, it's a public safety issue. The apparatus we needed to service the growing downtown uh, could not be stored in the downtown fire station. It's on the north side of town, on the other side of the train tracks, which could lead to uh, disastrous delays if it's needed. So uh, we need to uh, upgrade the facility, build a new facility downtown. Secondly, and this is uh, very important, is the health concerns we had with our uh, current facility. The ventilation is inadequate and the firefighters are exposed to a lot of carcinogens in fires these days and they uh, bring those back to the facility on their turnout gear. And we need uh, adequate laundry facilities and storage facilities uh, to take care of those things and uh, showers and such for people to uh, clean themselves up before they go home. So it's badly needed and we appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, I don't see any other uh, members to testify. Representative O'Neill, do you have anyone else here to testify? I don't see anyone no, else on the list. But, okay. So are there any questions? Rep Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Representative O'Neill, thanks for carrying this. And thank you to um, all the authors that we are um, going to hear from today regarding the sales tax exemptions on construction materials for facilities. Um, Mr. Chairman, the last time we had one of these up, um, I mentioned this, and I just want to uh, reiterate this again, that you know today we're not going to be voting on any of these bills. They're all going to be laid over. Uh, they're going to be attached to a larger omnibus bill that will contain much more contentious and confrontational materials. I, I recognize that in the past, there's been a reluctance to send House files over uh, tax bills over to the Senate for fear that number one on the House floor, the Republican majority is going to load it up with a bunch of them. You know, we're going to put a bunch of amendments or minorities and put a bunch of amendments here in the House and you're going to burn floor time or then the Senate will take the bill and fire it back. Mr. Chairman, I just want to let you know that it, that I'm not the leader of my caucus, but I got a pretty good sentiment of where we're at. If you were to package these bills, including you know, Representative Howard's, Fisher's, if you were to package these things earlier and put them into one bill, you are not going to see any problems from the House Republicans. And if the Senate screws around with your bill, you're not. We're going to send this bill to conference committee. You, you don't need to worry about us goofing around with this. this is, these are different times with public safety. And Mr. Chairman, I just I want to encourage you to to speak with leader um, with Representative Davids and some other Republicans. Getting these sales tax exemptions done now. Um, it really provides certainty to these local units of government. Uh, there really is no opposition to these, the case, the ones that I've read about. It's something that we really should be able to do early on. And I just want to encourage you to do that rather than laying this over and waiting for the end of session global agreement where there may or may not be a tax bill. And so just, I want to give you my word that uh, I'm willing to help you on that. You should you know, work with Representative Davids on it, but we should be able to pass these things early now instead of waiting for the the end of session. And if if there's some context or information I don't understand about why that's a why we have to wait, you can talk with me offline or you can answer it right now and explain the committee. But I really would encourage you this year to take these items and put them into a bill because um, you're not going to get any problems from us on the Republican side of the aisle if you do that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, and thank you very much, Representative Grupp. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, we are still going to be uh, hearing some bills next week. We're going to hear a represent Swazinski bill that kind of exempts uh, all of these type of um, construction materials on sales tax, which would kind of deal blanketly with all those. And I know uh, Representative Davids is also working on a bill that would exempt all public safety. So again, it would just kind of be just one that would take care of that. So. Uh, certainly noted your comments, uh, and but you know we still have more work to do on these, and there's also some bills coming down the road that might actually make this more efficient in the long term. So, anything else, members, on House File Number Six Fifty? 
if not, Representative O'Neill, um, final comments on this bill? Well, thank you so much, Chair Marquardt. I thank you so much for allowing us to go first. I know that's not uh, in tradition because I'm in the minority, but I appreciate so much the deference for that so that my community can get back to healing. This is $240,000 that will really help the public safety of the city of Buffalo and beyond. As you heard how many communities that the Buffalo Fire Department does serve. So this, the faster we can do this, the better they are. Um, I really appreciate your support today. Thank you, Chair and members. Um, thank you, Representative O'Neill. And uh, this is very important and again, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with you and the community of Buffalo. Uh, Representative Les Lagarde renews his motion to lay over House File 650 for possible inclusion into the House Tax Omnibus Bill. Thank you so much, Representative O'Neill. Thank you, testifiers. Thank you. Thank you. Next bill on the calendar is House File 474. Uh, Representative Howard, would you like to move your bill? Yes, Mr. Chair, I will move the bill. Representative Howard moves the layover House File 574 for possible inclusion in the House Tax Omnibus Bill. Representative Howard. Mr. Chair, Representative Hurtas. Uh, Rep Representative Hurtas. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just for the record, you uh, misquoted the uh, bill number as 474. It's 574. Thank you very much. Uh, House file, we will correct that in whatever minutes have been written to this point, 574. Very good. Representative Howard, we've got a motion on 574. Please proceed. Thank you, Representative Hurtas. Thanks, Mr. Chair and Representative Hurtas. Um, th this is a bill for a sales tax exemption for Bloomington Fire Station. Um, virtually all of the, the fire stations in Bloomington are at that age but where they're obsolete uh, and they're at the time uh, where they need to be uh, updated. And But be rather than going into it myself, I'll turn it over to my testifiers to, to share more details. Uh, very good. We've got Mayor Bussey. Yeah. Would you care to go first? Absolutely, Mr. Chair. Thank you so very much. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Tim Bussey. I have the honor and the pleasure of serving as mayor of the city of Bloomington. Before I dive in here, I do want to say to my uh, fellow local elected officials from Buffalo, if you're still on the line, our hearts are with you, folks. Thanks, uh, thanks for your response so far. You guys are doing a great job, and we're all pulling for you. We really are. Um, I am here, Mr. Chair, with uh, our fire chief, Yuli Seal to provide information and to formally request the sales tax exemption on the purchase of materials needed for the construction of our new fire station number four. As Representative Howard said, like uh, all communities of our vintage, the physical infrastructure in the city of Bloomington is aging. And in some cases that infrastructure is well past its useful life. And on the city council, we've committed to maintaining or if necessary, replacing this, uh, th this infrastructure in order to continue to provide critical services to our residents. And that's the case with fire station number four. We're in the process of replacement and an exemption of the sales tax on building materials would save city taxpayers approximately $240,000. And uh, we, we understand that's not an insignificant amount, especially considering the economic and financial hardship that Bloomington is facing as the result of COVID-19's impact on our hospitality industry, which as you know, uh, Mr. Chair, is a, is a significant part of the Bloomington uh, economy and a significant part of the Twin Cities economy as well. I'd like to thank uh, Representatives Howard and Carlson, and I'm sure Representative Elkins is lurking here somewhere as well, uh, and everyone else sponsoring for their sponsorship of this bill, for their ongoing support for the city of Bloomington. And I'd like to thank you, Mr. Chair, and, for, and members for your time and your attention this afternoon. I certainly do appreciate it. And now I'd like to turn it over to our, our content expert on this, uh, the person who makes me look good, our Bloomington Fire Chief, Yuli Seal. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chief Seal, please introduce yourself and begin with your testimony. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Yuli Seal. I'm the Fire Chief for the City of Bloomington. And I just want to echo what Mayor Boosie has indicated in that the fire stations are part of our critical infrastructure in the city. 
Four of our six stations are um, um, old and in um, need of replacement. Um, this bill addresses the next fire station that we have uh, planned to replace, fire station four. Um, and this bill will help alleviate the debt burden to uh, the taxpayers in our city um, and allow us to, uh, to uh, move forward expeditiously and, and replace this infrastructure. We really appreciate your support and thank you for hearing us. Thank you very much. Uh, Representative Howard, I do not see any other testifiers on the list. Is there anyone on who would like to testify? Not looking for members questions yet, but I don't see anyone. So any questions from members on House File 574? I don't see any, so Representative Howard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have nothing further to add. I just wanna thank our mayor and our chief. And uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and the committee for hearing this bill. Thank you very much, uh, Representative Howard. Representative Howard renews his motion to lay over House File 574 for possible inclusion into the House Tax Omnibus Bill. Thank you very much. Uh, next on the agenda, oh, before we move on again, we should be talking about revenue estimates. I know you have those, but just for the public, uh, House File 650, which was the Buffalo Fire Station, uh, that was uh, that would be 240,000 in this biennium. Uh, House file 574, the cost is 160,000 this biennium and 80,000 in the next biennium. And so uh, next on the agenda, House file 438, Representative Swazinski, would you care to move your bill? Yes, thank you, Chair Mark Ward. I move uh, House file 438 for possible inclusion uh, into a future omnibus bill. Um, House file 438 is uh, along the lines of the other bills that we were hearing today, uh, whether it's public safety um, or school related, uh, you know, these entities are all tax exempt because of the lump sum contract nature um, of these contracts that are uh, made um, through inadvert action when the, the, the carpenters or the construction companies go out and purchase materials on behalf of that tax exempt entity, uh, by default, they are priced in. So the materials are actually priced into the, the project with paying sales tax. And so what this would do is simply, I think the intent of the law to make them uh, tax exempt would kind of go after that to make sure that the local taxpayers um, are able to keep those funds locally, whether they lessen that or change the, pro the project uh, accordingly. Um, House file uh, 438 is straightforward in the fact that uh, it's going to be going towards an elementary school um, in Marshall. And I think the revenue estimate's 750,000, Chair Marquardt, but I'm not sure how the break is out. Um, I have Dion Carson, Director of Business for the Marshall Public Schools, and also Jeremy Williams, superintendent for the Marshall Public Schools as my professional testifiers today. Thank you Thank very you, much, Representative. Thank you very much, Representative Swazinski. And uh, we did have a similar exception for a school district in Minneota uh, that was similar to this also. Yes, so, yes. Very good. So um, who would like to go first, um, Mr. Williams, or who would like to, Mr. Williams. I'll go first. Thank you, my name is Jeremy Williams and the superintendent in Marshall and thank you committee for, for hearing us today. Um, I'd just like to share a little background about our district and this project. Marshall Public Schools is located in the southwest part of Minnesota in Lyon County. Our district has an enrollment of just shy of 2,500 students in grades, in grades K-12, plus an additional 105 in early childhood. The city of Marshall is our district's population center, and we serve families that live in the rural surrounding areas as well. We have been experiencing stable growth in enrollment over the past several, several years, and our current staff is currently at about 450. We currently own and operate educational programming within four school facilities. We have Parkside Elementary, which currently houses pre-K through second grade. Westside Elementary is the school that we are currently replacing, that it houses grades three through four. Um, that facility was built in 1955 and it's aging and in need of a, of a, has been in need of a number of repairs. So that's that facility re replaced. 
Uh, Marshall Middle School currently houses some of our early childhood programming plus grades five through eight. And Marshall High School houses grades nine through 12. That building is a newer building that was built in 2005. In addition to those school sites, we operate the Maytech Alternative Learning Program, which is an additional 28,000 square feet of leased space in a portion of an existing separate building from our existing buildings. We are experiencing enrollment growth and have struggled to provide enough space for all of our programs. Prior to passing the recent bond referendum, a mobile classroom was located outside of our Parkside Elementary School to try and accommodate the increased enrollment we've been experiencing. The recent bond referendum that passed and has we've started working on this project included safety and security enhancements at all of our buildings, replacing the aging and inefficient West Side facility, consolidating and better accommodating our early childhood program needs, uh, grade reconfiguration to house early childhood and kindergarten in one central facility, and meeting the 21st century needs of and opportunities for all of our students. This tax exemption would allow us to use the funds from the bond referendum to complete additional projects that fall under the scope of that referendum project, such as safety and security projects that are currently in our long-term facilities and maintenance plan, but we don't have the long-term facilities maintenance funds to cover all the projects that are needed. Dion Karen, our Director of Business Services, will share additional details in his testimony. Thank you very much, Superintendent. Dion Carson, if you would please identify yourself. Thank you. Uh, uh, my name is Dion Karen. I'm the Director of Business Services for Marshall Public Schools, and uh, just wanted to uh, thank Representative Swidensky for um, allowing us to uh, or introducing our bill so it could be heard in the testimony and the past and, and current support of uh, the sales tax on, on construction of the school buildings. Um, like Superintendent Williams had uh, uh, said, we passed a referendum in 2019. We're very fortunate to have the support of our community. Um, I do want to say that uh, probably the referendum had failed a couple of times past, and um, I think one of the major reasons the referendum did pass this last time was the support of legislature and the ag tax credit. Uh, so I just wanted to say thank you to to you guys for that because um, I think not just us but a lot of schools in the community in the state um, have really uh, benefited from that um, in passing our referendums. Um, so in surveying our community, one of the largest or one of the, the biggest things that they had uh, said was a concern was our safety uh, and security issues in our in our district. Along with that was when we passed the referendum, they just had a really um, talked about us keeping up on our facilities, the facilities we have, um, and uh, making sure that we're keeping those maintained so we're not in another situation like this. Um, I do want to point out we were very fortunate back in 2019 to have received a couple of the MBE safety grants uh, for two of our buildings in which we were able to put secured locations in. And part of the referendum that we passed in 2019 was to put secured locations in our other three locations. So uh, we're very appreciative of that also. Um, so part of the part of when we did the referendum, we also did a, a facility study with a company ICS in 2019 to go over all of our different buildings, uh, not including Westside, which uh, is getting decommissioned, uh, replacing it with the new elementary building we're, we're putting in place. And the facility study put around the facility cost around $22 million. Um, since then, we've, uh, we've tried to do what we could uh, along with our LTFM funds, which we're very grateful to, uh, to be getting the LTFM revenue, um, which changed a while back uh, to help schools along. We also have been doing some LTFM bonds uh, to try and move up some of those projects. But as you guys know, um, when you do the LTFM bonds, that takes away from your LTFM revenue until the bonds are paid back. Um, so we're still sitting at around $18.6 million in our LTFM projects. In the next 10 years, we'll probably get right a little over $10 million in revenue. Um, it's no different than a lot of other school districts, but with three uh, schools that we're trying to maintain, uh, Mr. Williams said our newer school, the high school, which is now at 16 years old, you know, that uh, we have a lot of things coming into play that we need to replace. So what we're asking is, is if uh, we were able to have the tax exemption on the new school of that 700, right around $750,000, we would be able to use a lot of that towards our LTFM uh, within the 
bond question that was approved by the taxpayers. And then uh, if there was anything left over, we would put that towards paying down the bond to help out the taxpayers. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Karen. Appreciate that. Before I go to members' questions, I don't see any other testifiers, but any other testifiers on House File 438? Very good. Representative Hurtos. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And as we've been listening to these proposals, um, I noticed that the uh, fiscal impacts are rounded into uh, increments of uh, generous amounts. Um, I know that the materials are not the whole cost of the project, but I'm just curious, uh, Representative Swedinsky or your testifiers, uh, based on the fiscal impact on this particular request, uh, Am I correct to assume that this is an 18 to $20 million project? Uh, Superintendent um, Williams, would you want to answer that? Or Representative yes. Swazinski? The overall project is $29 million. This dollar amount is based off of just the supplies and materials and the tax portion of that. Representative Hurtos. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you for that answer. I just... Uh, was curious, uh, you know, if these uh, fiscal impacts are just uh, kind of gratuitous uh, estimates, uh, and it's kind of hard to ratchet it down. It's my understanding that the uh, contractors will notify the district of what the amount of sales tax is actually paid, and that they will be submitting a direct reimbursement for uh, the amounts that the contractor paid. Uh, I do have a concern about exemptions before purchase, in that I think it can create opportunities to uh, make the margins a little greater for the uh, winning uh, uh, bidders on the project. So uh, I, I would like to see uh, it continue to be followed the way that it has been prescribed in the past. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you, Representative Hurtas. Good points. Uh, any, any other members' questions, comments? Representative Swazinski, any Closing thoughts. Thank you, uh, Chair Marco. Thank you, members, for your uh, time and attention on this bill. Um, I think a lot of these bills are really getting to the heart of what a lot of small communities are dealing with when it comes to uh, the construction, the construction costs to public facilities within their communities. So thanks again for hearing the bill, Chair Marco. Very good. Thank you very much. And Representative Swazinski renews his motion to lay over House File 438 for possible inclusion into the House Tax Omnibus. So thank you very much. Uh, next on the agenda is House File 181. We have Representative uh, Fisher uh, with Maple. Would anyone care to move House File 181? So moved, Mr. Chair. Representative Lessigar moves House File 181, laid over for possible inclusion. Representative Fisher, welcome to the committee. Thank you, Chair Marquardt. Thank you, Committee, for the opportunity to be before you today. Uh, this request is for forgiveness of the sales tax that will be associated with the new fire station being uh, rebuilt in the city of Maplewood. The fiscal note, if I remember correctly, is about $450,000. Uh, I do have two people from the city of Maplewood who are here with me today, Maplewood Mayor Mary Lee Abrams and Maplewood Fire Chief Michael Mondor. Uh, and I believe I will turn it over to the mayor first for her part of the presentation. Thank you very much, Representative Fisher. Mayor Abrams, if you would introduce yourself and proceed, and welcome to the committee. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Good afternoon, Chair Marquardt, members of the Tax Committee, and Representative Fisher. We're here today to ask for a sales tax, ex tax exemption, along with these other fine uh, municipalities, for construction materials to help lower the building cost of a new Maplewood fire station. With the pandemic, 2020 and 2021 have been a time of belt tightening for local governments, including Maplewood. We have suspended park and recreation services and halted operation of our nature center. We restructured our overall costs, but many of our businesses and residents are struggling financially. However, when it comes to public safety, a new fire station is something that we can no longer put off. With your support, we will replace the current 45-year-old facility that, frankly, I am very embarrassed about. We have firefighters sleeping in broom closets and former office spaces. It's not safe or suitable 
for our dedicated firefighter paramedics. And we lack a space in which to, that we could be proud to have our community gather. Community collaboration and inclusiveness are at the heart of our city's strategic goals. Our public safety department professionals are among Maplewood's strongest community outreach ambassadors. Modernization of our fire EMS operations highlights the fact that Maplewood Fire EMS needs are growing and we need this connection with our community. More than 85% of the calls for service are medical in nature. Back in 2017, our public safety professionals realized this trend would continue as our population ages and our residents become more diverse. We formed a citizen-led task force, which included healthcare professionals to help, help examine the issue and find solutions. We also hired an independent consultant who conducted a comprehensive study of our fire EMS operations and made several recommendations. They included transitioning to a full-time department, which we have successfully carried out. It included reconfiguring command staff to ensure the proper level of supervisory skills on all of our shifts, and we accomplished that. And finally, reconfiguring our fire station locations to improve efficiency. And this includes the building of the new North Side Fire Station. Chief Mondor will highlight the details of the new station, but there are two aspects that I'm most excited about. Improved safety and cancer mitigation features, that's one, and ample community gathering space, which is the second point. Because of Maplewood's unique geography, we border many communities. I'm always striving to position our city as a regional asset in the East Metro, and a state-of-the-art station will help ensure that we are that regional asset. I would respectfully ask for your help and support of the sales tax exemption uh, that is before the committee today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. And while I introduced you, I don't know if you introduced yourself. So just for the record, if you could just state your name. I'm sorry, my name is Mary Lee Abrams and I'm the mayor of Maplewood. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. Very good. So we will then go to Chief Mondor. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. For, uh, my name is Michael Mondor. I'm the fire chief for the city of Maplewood. And I appreciate the opportunity to testify today on behalf of this important issue. As Mayor Abrams alluded to, the Maplewood Fire Department has spent the past several years studying our service delivery to ensure that we are delivering the most effective emergency response services to the residents and visitors to the city of Maplewood. Over the past several years, our firefighters living in our North Station have experienced heating and air conditioning issues leaking and frozen pipes, sewer and drainage issues, along with several other mechanical and electrical issues. In addition to meeting basic departmental needs, the new station will account for modern day safety, wellness, support, administrative, operational, emergency operations, living and uh, apparatus needs. Specifically, the project will allow the department to address major causes of firefighter related illness, injury and death. At this time, we anticipate that we would occupy the new station in the spring of 2022. These improvements do not come without sig significant costs. The fire department is extremely grateful for the support that we've received from city administration, Mayor Abrams, uh, the Maplewood City Council and local elected uh, officials. We appreciate your time and support and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chief Mondor. Uh, anyone else would care to testify to House File 181. I do not see any. So members, any question for the testifiers or Representative Fisher? See none, uh, Representative Fisher. Uh, thank you, Chair Marquardt Committee. We appreciate your consideration and hope that this gets wrapped into the uh, bill that comes out at the final end of session or before then. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Representative. Thank you, Mayor and Chief. And Representative Les Lagarde renews his motion to lay over House File 181 for possible inclusion into the tax omnibus bill. Uh, thank you, Representative Fisher. Uh, next up on the agenda is House File 216, Representative Heinrich and uh, Representative Les Lagarde, would you care to, to move House File 216? So moved, Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative Lesligard moves to, to put 
House File 216 before the committee to be laid over for possible inclusion into the tax omnibus bill. Representative Heinrich, welcome to the the ever fun tax committee. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Glad to be here. Thank you, members. Uh, thank you, Representative Leislegard, for moving uh, my bill. Uh, House File 216 is a bill that would provide a sales tax uh, exemption for materials and supplies and, and things for a, a new public works facility in the city of Ramsey. Um, I guess with that, I'd like to turn it over, if it's all right with you, Mr. Chair, to my uh, star testifier, uh, City of Ramsey Administrator, Kurt Aldrich. Mr. Aldrich, uh, welcome to the committee. If you would identify yourself and begin your testimony. Mr. Ulrich, I think you're still muted. There you go. My apologies. Uh, <laughs> my name is Kurt Ulrich. I'm city administrator, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, and members of the committee. And uh, thank you to Representative Heinrich as well introducing this bill for the city of Ramsey. We're here today to ask for a sales tax exemption for a uh, public works facility for the city. And uh, the city um, project is a nearly $18 million project, which broke down, which broke ground uh, in October, 2020, and is currently under construction. Uh, our public works department is part of our uh, multifaceted city, which serves a, an area of 29 square miles and a population of over, over 29,000 people. Our public works department, of course, is important to our public safety response, as well as providing mutual aid in cases of um, emergency in other communities as well. Our current facilities are dated and are over 50 years old and consist of two small industrial buildings and one uh, double wide trailer, which aren't in very good condition at all. So clearly there is a need for this facility in the community and this new facility will uh, take care of the cities in the area wide needs uh, for the next 50 years. So it's, it's a long-term commitment of the city on behalf of the community. Uh, in addition to storage and office areas, it also provides mechanic uh, bays for uh, maintenance of our uh, our fleet, both public works, police and fire and parks, and, in, and most importantly, improved safety for our employees and efficiency for our local taxpayers. Uh, so on behalf of the city of Ramsey and our, our taxpayers, I want to thank the committee for their consideration of this um, sales tax exemption for our facility. Thank you. Mr. Ulrich, thank you so much. Uh, anyone else? that would like to testify that is on here. I don't see anyone. Uh, members, any questions for the testifier or Representative Heinrich? See none, Representative, any last comments? Representative, you're muted. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just want to thank you and the members of the committee for hearing this bill. Uh, it's a good, good bill. Vote green when it comes to it. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chair. Very good. Uh, thank you very much, Representative Heinrich. Uh, Representative Les Lagarde renews his motion to lay over House File 216 for possible inclusion in the House Tax Omnibus Bill. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ulrich. Thank you, Representative Heinrich. Uh, next on the agenda is House File 6. 54, Representative Acom. Uh, Representative Les Lagarde, would you like to move the House File 654? So moved, Mr. Chair. Uh, very good. Representative Les Lagarde moves um, House File 654 to be laid over for possible uh, inclusion into the House Tax Omnibus uh, Bill. And we have Representative Acom. Uh, welcome to the committee, and of course, you hold history uh, in the state of Minnesota because last year, being first alphabetically, you were the first person ever to vote, to actually cast a vote remotely 
in the Minnesota House of Representatives in our 160 some year history. So there you go. Well, Welcome to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I've um, had to do a couple since then. And so um, I am at, at the beginning of the alphabet and I think I may be looking for a name change to uh, top <laughs> to the middle. Um, going first isn't always what it's cracked up to be, but thank you, Mr. Chair and members for um, having us at the committee this this afternoon, I guess morning is long go long gone, um, and for the opportunity to share House File uh, 654. I am joined today by Minnetonka Assistant City Manager Mike Funk and our Chiefs of Police and Fire Chief Gorboom and Chief Vance. House 654 is requesting an extension for a sales tax exemption for the construction of an expanded public safety facility. The exemption was initially requested and granted in 2019. We introduced a bill last year to extend the exemption, but COVID prevented the bill from being taken up. The exemption expired the first of this year, and we are requesting an extension to January 1st of 2022. I want to introduce um, Mike Funk, Assistant City Manager, who can go into more detail. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Acom. Uh, Mr. Funk. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chair Marcourt and members of the Tax Committee for your time today to testify on House File 654. Uh, as already mentioned, my name is Mike Funk and I am the Assistant City Manager for the City of Minnetonka. I just want to pause and say thank you for the introduction and for your support, Representative Acom. Uh, it means a great deal to us that you're uh, carrying this legislation for us and you did a really nice job teeing it up for me so I can cut down my comments uh, here and I, I do want to turn it over to Chief John Vance uh, here in a second. I also just want to I'll take a second to uh, reintroduce uh, Chief John Vance who is our fire chief and also Police Chief Scott Borboom. They're both joining me on the call. Mr. Chair, if it's okay with you, I'll pass the virtual microphone over to Fire Chief John Vance to discuss our request for what Ms. Ankum already described as a time extension of our current sales tax exemption the city received in the 2019 legislative session for our police and fire facility project. At the conclusion of Fire Chief Vance's presentation, both fire, excuse me, both Police Chief Scott Borboom and I will be available for questions. So with that, uh, Chair Marcourt, I turn it over to, to John Vance. Thank you, Mr. Funk and Chief Vance. Welcome to the committee. If you would introduce yourself and begin your testimony. Yes, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is John Vance. I'm the fire chief of the city of Minnetonka Fire Department. And we appreciate you uh, hearing us again today and thank you for your support on our past project. Uh, currently the project is underway and uh, it's a new police and fire station, actually a remodeled police station and new fire station on our city hall campus. Our location is very central in the city and it's great for response time and uh, providing great service to the, the folks that we serve. I think my colleagues uh, today on the fire station projects very eloquently talked about some of the uh, issues facing the fire service and, and that's also the same here in the city of Minnetonka. Uh, we're looking at improved safety in our new facility. We're accommodating growth and the changing workforce that we have uh, within the uh, fire and police departments. Um, we went out to bid in April of 2019 on this project and uh, we were about uh, six million dollars over the estimate that we had. So we went back, valued engineered, cut some things and we were able to eliminate about five million dollars on the project and the project was rebid in October of 2019. Uh, currently, the project is underway. It's about two thirds completed. Uh, we were authorized as uh, Representative Acom stated until uh, January 1st on our uh, exemption from the uh, sales tax. Uh, we did have a delay uh, a little bit due to COVID, a little bit due to the rebid. Um, it's estimated right now that 60% of those purchases will take place in 2021. Um, even though two thirds of the project is completed, we still haven't purchased all the materials. Uh, kind of a side note, uh, there are currently over 300 people working on this project. So we, we certainly feel like it's uh, been good for the economy and good for putting people to work at this time. The total project is uh, just shy of $30 million. And what we're asking for today is the estimated remaining taxable costs from uh, January 1st uh, of this year until January 1st, 2022. We're estimating that to be around $200,000 um, for this year. Um, the overall is around 550 and we do not see exceeding the $850,000 cap that was previously on this project. 
with that, uh, I'll conclude my comments. I appreciate you hearing this today and appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Vance. And as Chief Vance uh, indicated, the revenue estimate is $200,000 in this biennium. And on the last bill, House File 216, uh, for Ramsey, that cost is 320000 I forgot to mention that last one. So any uh, representative, ACOM, any other testifiers? Otherwise, we'll go to questions from the members. I think we can go to questions. Very good. Uh, representative McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I got a question for uh, the uh, Fire Chief uh, Vance. Uh, Yance, I'm just wondering if you could help us cut our budget by uh, maybe $5 million. We could use some help in the state budget, and uh, any expertise would be uh, greatly appreciated. Because, we, as you can know, we're in a deficit. Uh, that was more of a comment, Mr. Chair. That's what I thought. Uh, thank you and very much, Representative. And a compliment. Thank very you, Mr. Good. Chair. Thank you, Representative McDonald. Any other questions or comments? See none. Uh, Representative Acom. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I will say I enjoy the um, the fun that you guys have on the tax committee, and I will have to try and get on it next year. But um, thank you so much for considering House File 654 and appreciate the time. Uh, thank you very much. And I appreciate the assistant city manager and the police chief and the fire chief uh, taking your time to come here today. And Representative Acom, thank you so much. And Representative Liz Lagarde renews his motion to uh, lay over House File 654 for possible inclusion uh, into the House uh, Tax Omnibus Bill. Uh, next and last on the agenda, House File 495, Rep Representative Ackland and Representative Hurtas, would you want to move this bill? Absolutely. I think. Uh registered nurse should introduce a registered nurse's bill. So uh, anyway, uh, Hurtas moves uh, House File 495 to be held over for possible inclusion in the omnibus tax bill. Thank you very much, Representative Hurtas. And Representative Acklin, welcome so much to the tax committee. And uh, if you would please present your bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. House File 495 provides a sales tax exemption on materials, supplies, and equipment used in the construction of a proposed new fire station in the city of St. Peter. This sales tax exemption is likely contingent on my other bill, House File 494, becoming law and the residents of St. Peter approving a local option sales tax to partially fund the construction of the new fire station. Attending today's hearing to testify on behalf of this bill is St. Peter Mayor Chuck Zeman. Sure. Thank you very much, Representative. Uh, Mayor Zeman, welcome to the committee. Please introduce yourself and begin your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chuck Zeman, Mayor of St. Peter for the last six years or so. Um, I would just like to uh, add a little bit about our history on this facility that we have now. The current facility that we're using was built in 1929. So we have a few years on some of the other uh, people that have presented, or municipalities that have presented today. Uh, it was not built as a fire hall. It was built as a Nicollet County garage. The city acquired the building in 1958. So we've been in that facility as a fire uh, station for 63 years. Uh, in 1958, the approximate population of St. Peter was about 8,000 people. Well, this next census, we should be right around 12,000 people. And the new facility we're talking about is, um, you know, first of all, the, the facility right now is 7,200 square feet. And it's downtown. And it's located on a lot that is 25,108 square feet. So just a little over half an acre. We have secured uh, 4.6 acres on the west edge of town that was derived from a study that we had done for feasibility. And the new facility is 22,133 square feet. So 
we are looking at a $9.1 million project that I know your impact said $280,000, I believe it was. Uh, we're looking at more like $354,000 as far as the sales tax exemption based off of our estimates that we have for materials uh, for building this new fire hall. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor. Uh, Representative Swazinski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, just wanted to say Representative Ackland's been uh, doing a great job representing this particular issue uh, and uh, just appreciate what she's doing. So good job moving that bill, Representative Ackland. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Any other questions or comments? Um, House File 495. If I could, Mr. Chair, I also would like to Mayor? personally thank uh, <laughs> Susan Ackland, our representative and my neighbor uh, for, uh, for all of her help and support. Uh, it is greatly appreciated and uh, one, we would like to reiterate the appreciation that we have for her and what she's doing. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Any other thoughts? I don't see any other comments. Uh, so, uh, Representative Ackland, any closing comments? Uh, just thank you, Chair Marquardt, and thank you for the kind comments that you've made about me, uh, Mayor Zeman. Um, I just want to thank the committee for considering this. I think it's, uh, we, we definitely need a new fire station. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Representative Hurtaz renews his motion to lay over House File 495 for possible inclusion in the House Tax Omnibus Bill. Mayor Zeman, thank you so much. Representative Ackland, thank you. Thank you. So members, that concludes our agenda for today. Thank you so much for uh, all the authors and everyone for your efficiency today. Uh, tomorrow, or on Tuesday, we will hear Representative Zinski's Bill, we'll hear the tax conformity uh, bill, which kind of basically has everything for the most part that we talked about last week on tax conformity. And then we kind of go from there. And I know both um, caucuses are working on looking at priorities uh, when it comes to all the conformity items that we have. And then Wednesday, there is no plan for a meeting next Wednesday. And then next Thursday, uh, we would have the governor's uh, tax bill. So uh, that's the agenda for next week. Everyone have a wonderful weekend. And with that, members, uh, we are adjourned.